stepwise devascularization describes the successive ligation of different vessels in the management of postpartum hemorrhage those vessels include ligation of one uterine artery and if bleeding is not controlled the ligation of other uterine artery as well after that low uterine arteries are ligated then one ovarian artery and then both ovarian arteries are ligated so how to perform the uterine artery ligation first of all take care of aseptic measures under good light exposure and anesthesia make sure that bladder is dissected adequately and resected downward to prevent vesico uterine trauma or the involvement of ureter exteriorize the uterus ask the assistant to hold the uterus and pull upward with the fundus tilted to opposite side to apply suture on one side this also helps to expose the lower part of broad ligament the suture used for this procedure is number 2 or number 1 absorbable suture palpate the cervix and feel for the pulsation of uterine artery near the junction of uterus and cervix using number 2 or number 1 absorbable suture on large needle pass the needle around the artery 2 to 3 cm medial to the lateral edge of the uterus via myometrium preferably from anterior to posterior then the stitch is passed via a vascular area of the broad ligament and then tied anteriorly place the suture as close to the uterus as possible as the ureter is generally 1 cm lateral to the uterine artery and 2 to 3 cm below the transverse uterine line repeat the same procedure on the other side if artery has been torn clamp and tie the bleeding ends it is advisable to ligate ovarian arteries also with the uterine arteries because of anastomosis between the two ligate the utero ovarian artery just below the point where ovarian suspensory ligament join the uterus repeat the same procedure on the other side as well observe for the continual bleeding and hematoma formation after ligating uterine arteries on both side if bleeding doesn't stop the next step in stepwise devascularization is internal iliac artery ligation when internal iliac artery ligation is being considered a senior gynecologist or vascular surgeon should be informed and involved since this technique requires a high degree of surgical skill and training and may be associated with ureteric injury Before explaining the internal iliac artery ligation let us briefly explain the anatomy of internal iliac artery the abdominal aorta divides into two common iliac arteries at the level of L5 and S1 the common iliac artery divides into external and internal iliac arteries the internal iliac artery divides into two trunks called anterior and posterior Now we will talk about the procedure of internal iliac artery ligation. Ask the assistant to hold the uterus. The round ligament is identified, it is clamped and divided. The broad ligament is opened. In this way we reach the retroperitoneal space which is opened. The common iliac artery is identified. Also carefully identify the ureter. for proper identification we can use the suction cannula in order to identify the vessel and by peristaltic movement we can identify the ureter identify the bifurcation of common iliac artery clear the areolar tissue around the internal iliac artery palpate the femoral pulse ligate the internal iliac artery elevate the artery with a back cock clamp pass a forceps from lateral to medial the same procedure is carried out on the other side as well it's important to know about the success rate of internal iliac artery which is about 40 to 90% in reducing the blood loss in the end examine carefully for bladder injury and repair it if it is found ensure that there is no bleeding place the drain reverse the uterus abdominally close the abdomen after completion of the patient procedure shift her to 
post operative ward for providing the post operative care so thank you so much that was something about stepwise devascularization subscribe on obstetrics and gynae allah hafiz